All right, so this video is um, episode three. It's about cell theory. <coughs> Excuse me. These are the three targets that you're going to need to know from these notes, um, although it should be quick um, because they're all related to each other. Um, but if you need to, go ahead and pause this, rewatch it, um, take notes, do what you need to do to know this material. Um, but as you need, I'm going to go ahead and move on to um, the next uh, section. So if you need to um, pause, go ahead and do that and jot this down. All right, so um, I guess what we first should do is actually answer the last um, target, which are which is the knowing the cell theory. And there there are a few parts to it, but this should mostly be review from middle school. So the first tenet or statement is that all life forms or all organisms are made from one or more cells. Secondly, the basic unit of life is the cell. In other words, the smallest unit of all living things is the cell. We can't get any smaller and call it a lot, call something alive. And cells arise from pre-existing or other cells that are already around cells. Now of course that might lead you to another question but I want you to write that down and we'll talk about it next class. So those are the three things we're going to talk about and how they came about, um, how we know those things now. So uh, let's go ahead and start talking about the history of it but first let's talk about what a cell actually is. So what is what is a cell? Well, a cell is, as we already said, the smallest structural unit of an organism that is capable of independent functioning, meaning that it can um, live on its own. It doesn't need others. And this is really why um, we say that viruses in our lives are not made out of cells, technically because they don't independently function. They need a host to survive. Um, and what's important to know is that for a really long time, um, we as people didn't know about cells because they're so small we can't see them what we needed to wait for was the technology to see things um, that are so small and that technology um, is our microscope. And really what they used first was the light compound microscope, but not with a plug in the wall because it was before electricity. Instead they used candles um, instead of a candles and mirrors instead of um, a light bulb. Okay, so let's talk about who these scientists were that discovered this. So the first guy that you need to know um, and you should or you might remember um, was a guy named Robert Hooke and what he saw in 1665 were dead cork cells so he was looking at this is going to be a terrible drawing through a microscope and he saw is a very I'll make this no a rough sketch of um, cells that he saw and he's actually the one who named these structures as cells from a word that refers to small compartment which is also the same root word for jail cell or monastery 
cells, um, it's a small compartment. And so Robert Hooke is the guy that you need to know for, and the date, 1665, and then he saw dead cork cells, um, and then he actually named those cells. The next guy, it, um, is Van Leeuwenhoek. Let me see if I can get his name spelt correctly here. It's an EU. Let me do that again. EU. Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. Um, and he did his, he's um, known in the history books to have worked in 1675. He was Dutch, whereas Robert Hooke was an Englishman. Um, and what he did was described the first animal cells. And he went later on um, to look at pond water. So he saw living cells under the microscope, and he named these things, it's not a word that we really use anymore, animalcules. He named those things animalcules, <coughs> but he was the first one to look at living organisms. And we have three more to talk about real quickly. Um, the next come in a pair. Schleiden and Schwann. And they actually, they both did quite a bit of work and are known in other fields besides development of cell theory, but they are known to have worked in 1838. That's, al that's almost two centuries after Hooke in 1665. And really, what's important here is that you know that Schleiden was a botanist. So he studied plants, and what he said was that all plants are made of cells. All of the plants that he looked at under a microscope, he saw cells for. What Schwann did, he studied animals, he was a zoologist, or actually a muscle guy. Um, all animals are made of cells. So all the tissue he looked at for animals, he also found cells. And then the last guy that we need to talk about is um, Mr. Virgo. Virgo. In 1855, he said that cells develop from pre-existing cells. All cells come from other cells, so we can actually see that under microscopes now. We don't see cells coming out of non-living things. Um, we also don't see life forming from non-living things. It has to come from other living things. Um, and if you have questions about that, be sure to ask um, so we can discuss them. So, we, I think that we did that pretty quickly, but if you go back to your, um, let's see if I can get back up here. If we go back to our targets here, we should be able to do them, and let's see if we can. Do you know what key discoveries led to the development of cell theory? You need to know who the scientists were, and more importantly, what they did. Same here. Um, they're related, but here it's telling you exactly what you need to be able to do is list three, and tell me what their contributions are, and you know the cell theory. You know the three parts to the cell theory. If you can put check marks next to those, then you're prepared. If you have questions, make sure you have those jotted down, and we can start class by discussing those. Okay? That's all.